What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel Zaynomics Gaming. Today we are going over a last week prep guide. That's pretty much what we do right before the next season begins and I will have some facts to go over though this week really isn't much of a grind. You really don't have too much to expect next season because we are not having a power cap increase. It will stay at 1810. So with that being said with the power cap actually staying the way it is we can focus on other areas and my main issue that I normally have with the seasons when they change and everything, I like to complete all my seasonal challenges, but I really struggle with completing Gambit and Vanguard. So this week for the last week, you definitely want to try to unlock the ornaments and then complete your resets for those seasonal challenges. That way you can get that big pile of bright dust. I know for some people it really doesn't matter, but with the increase in reputation points, you definitely want to complete those because you don't want to miss out on the bright dust because with bright dust, as you know, you can purchase Eververse store items as far as what's being sold for bright dust. So usually a lot of the new ornaments and gear and stuff like that will become available with bright dust at some point throughout the season. So it's definitely worth having. And all you have to do is just play the game. And you can see in the background gameplay, all I'm really playing is Gambit. I still have to complete the Vanguard and unlock the Ritual Weapon Ornament. After that, then I will be able to actually claim the big pile of Bright Dust. And you definitely, like I said, you wanna get those because Eververse does sell those items for Bright Dust throughout different seasons. And it's free Bright Dust, so why not? So, I mean, with me, of course, I haven't completed the Gambit or the Vanguard yet. If you've already done that and you haven't done other aspects or other seasonal challenges throughout the season, definitely knock those out, whether that be the raid or Neomuna events, like collecting the figures, any challenge that you have not completed for the season, definitely try to get that done this week. Um, like I said, normally I struggle with the Gambit and the Vanguard stuff just because I don't play those two core playlists as often as I should. Now moving on from there, you definitely want to claim or complete all of your seasonal um, rank gear that you actually get. So if you didn't know, if you don't claim your exotic engrams or anything like that, next season you can actually go back on the Bungie.net website, sign in, go to previous seasons, and claim any materials or any gear that you have left behind from previous seasons. So that is definitely good to know. If anyone needs help with that, you could definitely just you know reach out. I'll, I could point you in the right direction but you definitely want to make sure that you at least rank up to 100. That way you can actually claim all of your rewards through the season pass. Now from here, this does bring me to Guardian Games. So you definitely want to complete the Guardian Games quest on the character of your choosing. That way you can light the torches in the tower. You can get a lot of loot, especially if you've done it the past two weeks. And if you've already received the roles that you actually want, all you have to do is dismantle them and you will get a bunch of legendary shards as well as enhancement cores for the stuff that is masterworked. Um, so you definitely want to complete those. Also, when you turn your medals in, you will acquire loot as well, which you could continue to just dismantle. So it's definitely, um, since, you're, since you're actually grinding for the last part of the week and you're trying to catch up on certain aspects, you might as well go ahead and just pick up a couple Guardian Games bounties and complete those along the way. That way you can get additional loot. It's just smart to do. Um, so I highly recommend that you do so. For me personally, I'm not really too concerned about who wins Guardian Games. Um, I just don't have the competitive spirit in that retrospect just because I like all three classes. So I'm here for the loot. That's all I'm really here for. So like I said, just play it just because all you gotta do is get a couple bounties and you'll get loot along the way while you're actually grinding. Now from here, we will have exotic focusing next season, and there is some controversy around it just because of how expensive it is. It does cost three Ascendant Shards, which is really high, just because it takes three Ascendant Shards to actually masterwork an exotic. So, so in hindsight, if you actually focus an exotic Ingram and focus the exotic that you actually want, after you masterwork it, you'll be tied up six Ascendant Shards for this one exotic armor piece. And that is very high to me, but I guess you know you gotta pay to actually focus. Um, it is what it is. You can continue to do the Vex Strike Incursion Force on Neomuna, or you can continue to do the Legendary Lost Sectors, but this is a easier way instead of actually grinding rolls. Now, how they'll actually drop is questionable. Um, I would be very upset if I actually focused an exotic Ingram and I only got a 58 instead of like a 65 or so. 
but you know that's just my personal opinion you can let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of exotic ingram focusing um we will just have to see how it pans out next season also with the addition of the ascendant charge you will have to complete a bounty for Zer every week if you do not get um, an exotic cipher in the season pass and i believe in the season pass you get one or two of them um, don't quote me on that though i can go back and look but um, you can regularly do these bounties through Zer. And that leads me to another thing. When Zer comes around, I prefer to just buy an exotic Ingram from him. And it only costs 97 legendary shards. And half the time I get lucky and I get something that's a lot better than what I currently have. Now, while we're on the topic of exotics, I definitely recommend that you guys grind legendary lost sectors. So like I said, with the Guardian Games bounties, you can double dip and do the legendary lost sector contender card and complete legendary lost sectors and then you're also completing that guardian games bounty when you come back to the tower you turn in your medals so on and so forth you'll get that loot plus you should be getting exotics that you don't have currently so there will be a lot of exotic buffs coming next season with like no backup plans point cannon brace um, different exotics throughout the spectrum i will leave a link below for from bungie with all of the new reworks that is coming to the game next season. Now, normally we would actually stock up on bounties and that is a questionable feat because some people just don't like doing bounties. Some of the bounties are very tedious, but if you are trying to get ahead, bounties can actually help you out throughout the season pass. So for me, I'm not really too hung up on bounties this season just because as I play, I'll unlock the stuff. But if you're trying to actually unlock it, like in the next five minutes then you definitely want to complete those bounties get with a fire team turn all those weekly bounties in and then progress however you see fit um but for me this season i'm not really too caught up on actually stocking up on bounties just because we're not having a power increase normally i would try to stock up on bounties get my season pass ranked up go do my powerfuls and then do my pinnacles and so on and so forth but since the power cap is pretty much staying the same i really don't see a need to actually grind now the bounties can help you out in getting rank and getting to a higher power with the artifact mod but then again i do not see a need for it just because our pinnacle cap is not increasing any of course you do know that grandmaster nightfalls requires a minimum 1815 but that will not be hard to reach just because of all the powerful gear and pinnacle gear that we'll be able to get through all the new dungeons and all the new activities inside destiny 2 next season so i really don't see a gr need for the uh grind for the artifact um or for hanging on to the bounties just, that's just my opinion but i mean it just depends on how you play yourself as you are playing the game and completing the rest of your seasonal challenges or doing guardian games you can collect these bounties and actually save them for next season now there's certain bounties that you cannot keep so like seasonal bounties for example you cannot keep those will go away at the end of the season get the weekly bounties complete those first and then after you complete your weekly bounties then you want to go back and do your daily bounties but just as a reminder you cannot keep seasonal vendor bounties or guardian games bounties for next season to turn in because they will go away next tuesday at reset now just a few key notes before season 21 actually starts Finest Matter Weaves will actually be cycled out and they will go away. So you don't have to worry about popping those and killing a major to get an enhancement core. Next season, you will just be able to discard them. Well, not discard them. You'll be able to actually turn them in, dismantle them for an enhancement core. So you won't actually have to do anything for them. Um, so if you got a bunch of them saved up, I got like 200 or so. That's essentially going to be 200 enhancement cores for myself. Also, too, you want to make sure you have enough vault space. We will have a refresh of weapons plus the new ritual weapon. We'll have, um, of course, new seasonal weapons. So you definitely want to have some vault space to actually have room for those weapons. So definitely clean out your vault. Get rid of the stuff that you plan on, you know, that you're not going to use. So if you have perks that just don't go together, get rid of them. There, there's no point in hanging on to them. They're not going to be meta the next season. Just get rid of them and, and get your materials that you need. Also, too, Bungie announced that there will not be a seasonal vendor upgrade path next season. So we will not actually have to unlock seasonal vendor upgrades throughout the season. So we'll just have to see how that plays into 
um, the season itself. Hopefully the store is good. I know we'll be going underwater. I can't wait to see all the new changes and plans that they have and that, that they set forth. That's going to do it for the video, guys. Remember, if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like the video and also consider subscribing to my channel. I may do a giveaway once we reach a subscriber milestone. I'm really trying to get at least to a thousand subscribers and then continue to grow my channel from there. I appreciate all the support from my current subscribers and followers. Thank you all so much. It is greatly appreciated. Also, if you guys could leave me a comment down below on what you think next season will actually be about, or you could also leave me a comment um, about the new exotic changes that's coming. We'll have some refreshed builds coming out just because of all the changes that has been going on with the exotic armor. So there's definitely a lot of stuff to play around with, including the new artifact mods, which as of right now, we do not know what they are. Um, just leave me a comment down below on what you guys think of all of this information that you have learned today or what you think next season is about. Um, that's going to do it for me. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. I will see you guys in the next video. Also, don't forget, um, P.S. I will have that bow video out this weekend. I know it's been long overdue. That will be my part two and I will have a ranking tier list for that video. So definitely stick around for that.